Hello and welcome to Prairie Pulse. I'm John Harris. Joining me today is Dr. Stephen Shirley, the University President for Valley City State. Dr. Shirley, thanks for joining us today. Glad to be here. Thank you, John. As we get started here, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Yeah, well, happy to be here. Thank you for the invitation. I'm a, a Fargo native, so I'm certainly happy to be, uh, be in town here today. Uh, I'm from Fargo, grew up uh, in Fargo, did my schooling at the University of North Dakota. Uh, did my undergraduate, master's, and, and Ph.D. work up there. Uh, spent some time in the University of Minnesota system. I was at the University of Minnesota Crookston campus uh, as a professor of business uh, in that area and, and did some work with uh, study abroad programming and um, working to encourage students to study abroad and spend some time overseas during their time in college. Uh, and then spent, uh, I was there for seven years, and then after that spent four years down at Dakota State University in Madison, South Dakota uh, as Vice President of Student Affairs and uh, came to Valley City State as the President on July 1st of this year. Okay. Uh, I, I know, you, you know we had uh, uh, Dr. Chafee, Ellen Chafee, mm -hmm. on this show uh, some time ago, and you're filling her shoes, pretty big shoes to fill, I, I believe. But can you talk a little bit about, have you had a chance to talk with her and get some advice? And you know, I, I really have. I, I, I didn't know Dr. Chaffee until this process, until I had applied and, and uh, accepted the position here, uh, and really had a, a lot of conversation with, with her during the transition and had a good chance to get to know Dr. Chaffee. She served uh, Valley City State for 15 years as its president and uh, really did a, a tremendous job and obviously has a lot of ties in this area and, and uh, really uh, established a, a, a good reputation in, in education. And so uh, it was uh, really nice and beneficial getting to know Dr. Chaffee and working with her through the transition. And, and to this day, I continue to, to keep in touch with, with her from time to time. And she's, she's enjoying, she's on to new things and, and uh, semi-retired, but she keeps awfully busy as well. And uh, it's, it's fun to kind of stay in touch with her as well. Good. Well, obviously, it seems like you have some pretty deep roots uh, in this area and around the Dakotas. Uh, can you talk about how this sort of prepares you for this job? Yeah, you know, it's one of the things that I, I have said all along, and, and I continue to say to this day, and I mean it, is I, I'm proud to be a product of the North Dakota University system. Uh, I am a product, so I certainly believe in the system. I went through the system. Uh, I believe in public education, public higher education in the state of North Dakota. And uh, I think having that, that root and that background uh, really has prepared me for what I'm doing today as the president at Valley City State. Uh, obviously have a lot of family ties and things like that throughout the state and have, uh, have uh, spent um, countless uh, days across the state growing up and, and just uh, vacationing and, and spending time throughout the state with relatives and things like that. But uh, I think that those ties um, really gives me a better perspective as to who our students are and the types of students that we're serving at Valley City State University. And again, uh, being a product of this system, it, it just, I think, gives me a little bit different perspective than maybe someone might have coming in from the outside that maybe isn't as familiar with, with the, the system. Well, we may expand on that as we talk, but what about your work down at Dakota State as Vice President and Dean of Student Affairs? How did that set you up here? That's right. I, I, uh, as I said, I spent seven years as a professor at UM, University of Minnesota Crookston and then uh, really essentially took a career change and switched over to, to Vice President of Student Affairs, which is a real shift from the, from the professor side of things to being a, a Dean of Student Affairs. Uh, and with that, you work a lot with financial aid and admissions and housing and food service and counseling and activities and, and those kinds of things, sort of everything that goes on outside of the classroom. And so with my background, having spent time in the classroom as a teaching faculty member, as a professor, and then having spent the time with, with all of those things that go on in the university setting outside of the classroom, I think that really prepared me now for what I'm doing today as a president. I have a very uh, well-rounded perspective on what our students do both, both in and out of the classroom. And so I think that experience, that sort of collective experience really served me well. Well, so the professor role and then uh, the vice president mm -hmm. dean, as you talked about, what, what's been the biggest adjustment you've had to make uh, in becoming now a college president? You know, I, th I think probably the biggest adjustment, John, and it's it's not unexpected. I certainly expected, and, and I've enjoyed it. But uh, how external the position of presidency is, and how much time you spend off campus and, and doing things like what we're doing today. Um, but a lot of you, you really become, in a sense, the face of the institution, and, and so you spend a lot of time, and whether that's with with constituents or alumni or uh, legislators or um, you know just the common taxpayer on the street or friends of the university, whomever it may be. Um, there's a lot of that external. Uh, relationship building and so forth that, that goes on. And I, I absolutely love that part of the job. But that certainly is, you know, you don't do as much of that, say, when you're a professor or when you're in uh, the other former role I had as a vice president of student affairs. And, and that's been a, you know, I, I, I certainly have enjoyed it, but it's been a little bit of an adjustment 
managing time and, and making sure you're spending appropriate time both on campus and off campus. It, it's, it's been, a, been a, a bit of an adjustment, but I've certainly enjoyed it. Well, and that balancing act, I'm sure, can get kind of tricky sometimes. Yeah, yeah. But uh, talk a little bit about the, the three colleges. You mentioned Crookston and, and, and down in, in South Dakota yeah. and now here. Uh, how are those all sort of similar? Uh, the, the three institutions that I've, I've primarily uh, worked at are all laptop universities. Uh, they're all similar in size, they're similar in the type of student demographic that we serve, so there really are a lot of commonalities and similarities between the three institutions. Uh, Valley City State uh, University was one of the very first institutions in the United States to adopt uh, laptop technology for all of its students, and we've been doing this now for, uh, gosh, nearly 15 years. Uh, we've implemented uh, laptop technology into the hands of our every single student on campus every faculty member gets a laptop and it really changes the sort of the dynamic of how uh, instructors and students interact in the way that uh, uh, professors deliver their curriculum and so forth and really makes for a unique teaching setting and so when our students get out uh, into the work setting boy they are at the cutting edge with regard to technology and and uh, what employers are looking for and so forth so we certainly think it's very valuable and, and as do our students well it, it, it just flip the coin a little bit. What, sort of what are, are the challenges a smaller school like Valley uh, mm -hmm. City State faces that are different from, say, UND, which as a student you spent sure. there, uh, where you did your uh, undergraduate and graduate work. Mm -hmm. You know, challenges. That, uh, I think there's you know there's there's pros and cons wherever a person is at, and and opportunities and challenges alike. Um, certainly, some of the challenges, since your question focused on challenges at Valley City State, being the size that we are, you know, there's an awful lot of one person departments or one person you know this this position or this staff area it might just be one person deep or there's you know a lot of folks that wear a lot of hats uh, and, and do multiple things and, that, and that's just a reality of the business that we're in and the size that we are and that's the reality of, of small institutions across the United States but um, boy it really highlights the, the quality of people that you, you you have on staff and the types of folks that you hire and and put trust into those folks that that can wear a lot of hats and and, and you know be pretty nimble in, in these small settings Mm -hmm. Well, as you came in, uh, did you did you come in with some goals, or what are your primary goals as a new president? Yeah, absolutely. I, I sure did, and I've talked a lot, a lot about these things with the State Board of Higher Education and, and during the hiring process and so forth. But certainly, uh, enrollment is is front and center on on my radar screen, um, and we've been. You know, essentially, we, we've uh, we've been basically a, a flatline enrollment over the last number of years. Our overall enrollment. Uh, now we've had some tremendous gains in certain majors and certain areas in our graduate program uh, have really taken off. But we've had some other areas within the institution that have sort of flatlined. And so, um, and and that's a reality of the, the again the demographics of this state and some of the challenges in the upper Midwest. And uh, enrollment is is number one my my main priority. And we're looking at really a wide variety of different ways to address enrollment issues and opportunities that are out there. Again, as you look at new technologies that are available and d being able to deliver curriculum uh, at a distance and, and to other locations, there's a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of opportunities in this state, John, as well for uh, folks that are non-traditional students, folks that are maybe 25 and older that have perhaps did a year or two of college some years back and now looking to, to revamp, uh, to, to come back and retool their skills or get a bachelor's degree. Um, we think that there's a large market in the state of North Dakota um, uh, as far as those adult learners as well that's available. And then we think there's also an awful lot of opportunities both getting out beyond our state borders and also getting beyond our national borders. And so we're looking at some things internationally as well. And we've got uh, our inter international enrollments this fall. Uh, the numbers of countries that we have students coming from are, are the highest they've been in many, many years. So we think there continues to be some opportunities there as well. Well, and how many students do you have currently enrolled? Uh, we're right at about a thousand is, is okay. uh, our head count. And, and uh, can you talk some about the programs you have there at the university and, and uh, the emphasis on the program? Sure, absolutely. Valley City State was founded in 1890 as a normal school, as, as a teacher's college, and so we have a long almost 120 year history as, as providing tremendous teacher education. Uh, we, uh, elementary education is our biggest enrollment. Uh, it's our largest number of students in elementary education. Uh, we added a master's degree program about three years ago. We've got three different concentrations in master's, uh, in master's degrees. And so our master's of education students are actually our second largest enrollment. Um, we, we have a large number of business students. Uh, we have a couple of new programs, one in fisheries and wildlife that's really taken off. And again, 
again, geographically with where Valley City is located with Lake Ashtabula and the fish hatchery, um, really situated in a nice location for that fisheries and wildlife program. Health sciences program is really growing. That's a new major as of a few years ago. Our students are doing a lot of really unique uh, research, undergraduate research uh, opportunities and so forth that they're taking advantage of. A lot of our students in health sciences go on to, to graduate work in the, in the medical field or uh, you know, advance their, their careers in, in health sciences with a master's degree as well. So um, those are some of our you know, larger majors and, and growing majors on the campus. Well, Dr. Shirley, you mentioned yeah, with education, uh, fisheries and wildlife surprises yeah. me, and then the, the health uh, sciences. Are, do, you, do you see a lot of your students uh, graduating or moving on and staying in the region, or are they moving out of the region? Because I know out migration when I got here five and a half years ago was all what everybody talked about. Right, and you and I were visiting a little bit about this before we went on air, but the, uh, you know, the issue that I think we're starting to see this thing, at least if I look back on my experience as a student some, some years back and compare it to today, I think a lot more students are looking to stay inward, looking to stay in the state, or we're seeing a lot of, uh, a student might go to Minneapolis for a year or two and think, you know, this, uh, I, things weren't so bad back in North Dakota. I had pretty good experience there, and maybe I want to move back or start a family, do things back in North Dakota. So uh, we're seeing more and more students stay in our state and again, with the, you know, there's 15,000 open jobs in this state right now. It's one of our great challenges as a state is what we can do to uh, to fill those positions and to continue to grow our economy. It's it's a good problem to have. It's a lot better than the other problem. Uh, with you know, what, but we do have a very low unemployment rate, and with that comes some challenges to fill some of these positions. And so we're certainly doing everything we can as an institution to not only educate our students here but encourage them to stay in the state. What about fundraising at Valley City State and, and I guess funding your programs, uh, I assume, obviously this has to be a big focus for you and your, your role now. Absolutely. You know, uh, in public public education, public higher education, uh, funding mechanisms are, are absolutely a day-to-day -day issue that's on the front of our, our minds. And certainly fundraising, uh, working with our foundation, we have a great foundation staff, we have a very committed foundation board, folks that are involved with the VCSU Foundation. And so certainly being focused on that endowment uh, continues to be another one of my big priorities and looking to grow our overall endowment and if we're going to continue to to recruit the best and brightest students not just within the state but if we're going to try and steal some some students across the state and bring some students in from other states and get them to to relocate and, and live here in our state and continue to help grow our economy we have to have scholarships available to recruit some of that best and brightest talent that's out there so it's it is a big part of our, our jobs well let's turn from the students I guess to the professors mm -hmm. uh, what about the salaries? I know it's got to be a concern of a smaller institution uh, to be competitive and can you uh, elaborate some on sort of how you fit with uh, other schools the same size and then a in the region and I guess across the country? You know, we, we do a, a peer review study, the state, uh, the state board does a peer review study and just got some of that data uh, earlier this fall. Uh, and there, uh, we significantly lag in faculty salaries. And you know, I don't think that's any surprise to anyone in the state, but uh, we lag by, by 20, 25 uh, percent compared to our peers, not on a national average, but just compared to our upper Midwest regional peers. We lag uh, a significant double digit percent. Uh, and that poses a real challenge as, as we want to continue to not just recruit recruit the best faculty that are out there that are working with cutting edge research and that are on the edge of their fields and so forth, but if we want to retain those folks, we need to be able to, to compensate them appropriately so that our students within the state get the absolute best education that they can. Um, we want them to be exposed to the best faculty members that are out there. And, and uh, you know, we've got committed, dedicated faculty that work hard, put in a lot of hours, committed to our students and, and you know, spend that time and go that extra mile and, and they really frankly need to be compensated appropriately and, and we don't think they are right now and so we're looking at, at what can be done to, to you know remedy that uh, as best we can um, and keep in mind that higher education it's, it's a national and it's an international marketplace so we're when we as Valley City State when we go out and we're recruiting faculty members we're recruiting against every university in this country uh, and it's a competitive marketplace and so we we really think that that lag that we have with faculty salaries we need to make that lag up and, and continue to close that gap because if you look back over the last 20 years there's been a lag in the state for a long time and it's 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 widened it hasn't gotten better it's 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 widened over the years and so we really seriously need to address that issue well, I think you answered my next two questions, but you, you've, you've met, you assume you've met with all your faculty and staff now and, sure. and uh, had the opportunity to do that. But how about getting, you mentioned getting into the community and, and the role as, as president. Have you had a chance to do much of that and meeting people? And I guess I'm going to stem around the question of your alumni. Yep. You know, how active are they 
and, and uh, alumni and community, what all is going on? It, a lot of questions there, but absolutely no. It's it's uh, again. That's one of the things that's been so exciting for me as a as a native of this area and of, of Eastern North Dakota, um, being able to go to alumni activities and, and connecting with alumni, not just in Valley City, but alumni in in Fargo or in Grand Forks or in Bismarck or cr throughout the region. Uh, it's been fun to be able to reconnect with some of those folks and, and recognize the ties that, that we do have and what we share in common. Um, we've started something this fall that that uh, VCSU had never done before, and we've started now a once a month alumni get together in Fargo. Uh, we have a lot of alumni in Fargo and so um, you know we've done a lot of things obviously over the years in Valley City and we continue to do that but we need to also focus on, on where some of our large pools of, of alumni are at and, and they're in Fargo and Bismarck and, and Grand Forks and so forth. So we're going to continue to do some of those things and continue to reach out. Those alumni are, are so important for the university and we've got, we've got a base of about 10,000 alumni uh, from Valley City State uh, so we've got a lot of alumni out there and it's been fun to, to continue. I I think uh, I, I don't think I've met all ten thousand yet, but I've, I've met an awful lot of them the last several months. Well, well, let's. Uh, you we talked about funding and trying to tie it all in. Of course, the new biennium uh, upon us now. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any? Any uh, special request, or are you looking? What, how are you looking at the new biennium? We do. We we have one uh, one project that was on the the capital projects list that was a, approved by the State Board of Higher Education this past summer, uh, and that's for an 11.2 million dollar expansion uh, and renovation of our Rhodes Science Center, our Science Center. Um, science majors on our campus uh, with health sciences, fisheries and wildlife, some of the science education and so forth. It's one of the fastest growing areas on our campus, and the the labs and the building and the, the research. That these folks are, are teaching in the, the, the laboratories and so forth that space is 35 years old and so you know we've we've missed a, a generation or two of updating that facility over the years and so um, you know if we're going to continue to to educate our students we think it's only fair to the young people of this state and to the families uh, that support those students that those students have cutting-edge laboratories and cutting-edge space to, to work and to learn about science and so forth it's a big issue that we have on our campus and that's in the stem fields science technology engineering and mathematics and there's gotten to be some real international uh, um, focus on the STEM fields. Uh, our country is, is really falling behind, and particularly if you look at engineering majors and mathematics majors and some of the physical science majors. And again, as our institution, as a K-12, you know, uh, uh, we do a lot of K-12 teacher education, we think we can have a big inf influence in how those teachers are going out delivering curriculum, working with young people so that when they get to be 18 years old they want to go into engineering or they want to go into mathematics or they want to go into science. And we think as a, as a nation we really are at a point where we need a bit of a wake-up call and need to get more folks into, into some of those majors. Uh, we're going to continue to fall behind you know the, the Chinese and, and India and, and other parts of the world where um, you know they're putting out uh, science and engineering majors at just phenomenal paces. So, and you are correct; they are. Yeah. Uh, you, you told me about where your students primarily come from, but but you also mentioned about international students, and and, you, and another thing you mentioned, at least in your talk about. Get, I think you did this trying to get people to study abroad. Yeah. And, but so, how are you attracting people? And tell us, expand on this for us, sure. how you're getting international students to come to a small town, rural yeah. North Dakota. Absolutely. And uh, the, the in involvement in that. Yeah, we find that we've got students from about 12 different countries, John. And, and for an institution of our size, that's, that's a good diversity. That's a good level of diversity. We want to continue to grow that and expand that, that further. Um, but a lot of these students will come from... You know, cities in, in India or Mongolia or Japan or Honduras or whatever it may be, and they, they may be coming from a city in their home country that's got three or five or eight million people. And mom and dad is saying, you know, if maybe a, a small town, sort of rural, upper Midwest, USA type of, of education might be the best thing for you and get you out of this, you know, huge metropolitan area. So we see a lot of our students that are international are coming from these huge metropolitan areas and just absolutely falling in love with a campus like Valley City State and, and what it can provide and kind of the personal attention and things like that. And so we think there continues to be some real opportunity there. Uh, we're exploring some new initiatives in China and, and elsewhere. And and um, there's, there's certainly possibilities out there. And, and again, as a state, um, with the, the, the shrinking demographic that we have, um, you know, international students aren't the only answer, but they're part of the answer for, for some of our enrollment challenges that, that all of us face in, in the upper Midwest. Uh, and I, I, 
Do you do a lot of online uh, classes? We do. We, yep, we have a, a number of programs that are completely online. Some of our master's programs, for example, are completely online. We, we're doing some really exciting things in music education right now. Um, there's some, some fascinating things that, that our music professors are doing and being able to provide uh, teaching on an instrument, for example, online with technology that's available. Uh, there's some phenomenal things. And so we're continuing to grow online education across our, our majors, um, regardless of the major. And again, that's part of the answer for our enrollment challenges as well. Again, all of these things, they're not, not any one of these is the silver bullet remedy for what we need to do, but they're all parts of the, of the solution. And so that's what's exciting about it. They're, you know, we always talk about challenges, but there's a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of ways to solve the puzzle. Well, you mentioned the State Board of Higher Education. Uh, I guess you meet often with the, the Chancellor, Bill Gates. Yeah, absolutely. And can you talk about your relationship that, uh, that you started with him, I guess? Yep. Uh, going back, uh, obviously, back into the interviewing process last spring and, and once I got hired on July 1st and, and on through the last several months, I uh, really enjoyed getting to, to meet and, and work with uh, uh, Chancellor Getz on, on a very regular basis, obviously. And, and Chancellor Getz um, is really doing a terrific job, particularly on you know, this is, he's the chancellor of the system. We're the North Dakota University system. It's an 11 campus system. And we're focusing a lot on collaboration and working as a system and, and you know, what can, you know, what we do with the other 10 institutions across the state and, and likewise, how do the, the other institutions view working with us and the others across the state. And the chancellor is really committed to that system approach and that collaboration. And that's, boy, that's been refreshing to walk into that, that atmosphere and, and to work with, with the chancellor. It's been a real um, good, good uh, relationship. Well, and of course, there's, been, there's a wide open discussion about 11 institutions and sure. how many should exist and the funding for all those, but we probably won't get into that too sure. much. But, but I know that your university provides a service and, and is uh, very much needed uh, uh, for the state. Absolutely. We think so too, John. Well, you talked about budgeting a little bit, but you know, how do you look for just short term? I mean, how does it look like for next year? Uh, look, again, we're, we're a very tuition-driven institution, and so that's why enrollment is so important for us, uh, in, uh, the, the tuition, obviously, and fees and so forth that we collect from those students and those incoming freshmen. I mean, they're the folks that, that live in the residence halls and utilize food service and use the bookstore and live on campus and all those things. So those incoming freshmen are really important. And so as we're sort of right in the heart of, of recruiting season right now for next fall's incoming freshman class, we're pretty, pretty excited about the future, and, and things are looking, we're, we're online right now with our, trend, with our uh, enrollment goals. Well, good. Well, you mentioned recruiting. That leads me to ath athletics a little bit. What about athletics? Uh, do you have what do you have there, and what's available for students? You know, we have uh, in athletics we have baseball and softball, we have football and volleyball, and we have men's and women's basketball. And we compete in the Dakota Athletic Conference. There's five institutions in North Dakota and three in South Dakota that are a part of that conference. And uh, we think. You know, I personally think athletics plays a huge role in the overall development of the student and the, the growth of, of students when you talk about team building and time management and practice and discipline and all those kinds of things that, that come along with athletics. Uh, we've committed to adding men's and women's golf next year, and so we're going to add men's and women's golf. And we think that, uh, especially on a campus of our size, uh, athletic participation plays a big role, again, in helping us achieve our, our enrollment goals. Um, so certainly a firm believer in athletics and the role that it plays. Okay. Well, let, let's ask you kind of open-ended. What, what, what would you like people to know out there about uh, Valley City State University that perhaps they don't know? You know, I think it was highlighted in, in our conversation with the, the sort of the surprise on your face with fisheries and wildlife. We, ha we have a lot of these programs that I think we need to continue. We're in the midst of a new marketing campaign, but we need to continue to get out the word on, on some of the things that we do. And, and whether you look at education or you look at business or you look at music or you look at the sciences or you look at something like fisheries and wildlife, um, we have an awful lot of different programs and then traditional programs, communications and psychology and things like that. Um, you know, it, it, I, I'm so excited about Valley City State because it's, it's really like a, a small a private school at a, at a public cost. And so we think that, that that feel that our students get on our campus and that education that they get and that one-on-one -on -one attention and, and then being able to participate in student clubs and organizations and getting involved with student government and intramural sports and all those kinds of things that students really have the opportunity to do on a campus our size. Um, gosh, I, you know, for me it's exciting to come to work every single day and, and see that excitement and energy with the students and the faculty and staff. Well, it's always uh, good that you enjoy what you do. That's right. Uh, all right, we talked about your goal but have you had time to really look down the road and think, what do I want it 
to be like five to ten years from now? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we need to continue to focus on, on our enrollment, and, and we've got some numbers that we've put in place for a five-year goal uh, to grow the institution. Um, we're continuing to look. You know, I think higher education is going to be a much different animal ten years from now than it, than it is right now. Um, and, and a lot of that is with technology, how technology continues to change. Not only how do we deliver curriculum and deliver education on campus, but how are we able to reach out and communicate um, with folks at a distance and with folks uh, you know, in another community to provide education. Some of the ways that we're able to collaborate with other institutions, whether it's other two-year institutions or maybe it's working more with, with schools that have more, more graduate programs, but how do we continue to, to work with those institutions and collaborate Collaborate. Um, that's going to be a big part of the direction that we head. And again, I, I'm really uh, committed to the international uh, experience. We touched on it a little bit, recruiting international students, but as you said, a big passion and a big uh, um, focus of mine is also on getting our students to be able to go study abroad for a semester or a year. Um, we think that the opportunities that that brings for students is just tremendous and adds to their the enrichment of their education. Well, Dr. Shirley, finally, if folks want more, want more information, where can they go? Online, vcsu.edu. Well, all right. Very good. Thank you for joining us today. All right, thank you. Well, that's all we have this week. As always, thanks for watching.